Welcome to our Media Center. Hi students, and welcome to the Jeff Davis Primary School Media Center. We are so excited you decided to stop in today and learn a little more about what we have to offer. Whether you are interested in learning more about books, computers, or our reading area, there is always lots to do and lots to see in our Media Center. Okay everyone, let's get ready to learn how we can find what we are looking for in the different areas of our Media Center. Within our Media Center, there are several areas that we will learn about today. Let's begin with one of our most abundant resources, books. Among the many, many books we have available, there are four main sections in our Media Center, each offering a different type of book. First we will learn about our easy books, then we will move on to the fiction, nonfiction, and reference material sections. Pay attention as we discover what each of these sections have to offer. We will review these again at the end and see if you can help figure out where some of these books belong. This is what we call the easy section. Here, books that consist primarily of picture books are kept. These books are intended for young readers, but can also be a quick fun read for our older readers. The books here may be fictional, meaning they are made up by the author, or nonfiction, meaning they are true stories. Most often, these stories will be made up by the author. Books in the easy section are arranged alphabetically by the author's last name. So let's say you are looking for a Franklin book. You would need to look in the B section because the author's last name, Bourgeois, begins with a B. So as we find our book, there are some important things we need to pay attention to. This is a book from the easy section of the Media Center. We can find the call number on a book in our Media Center in two places. The call number for this book is E-S-C-H because the author's last name is Schaefer. The other location to find the call number is on the spine of the book. Here you will see the same call number for this book as E-S-C-H. Looking for our call number is important for a few reasons. First, it helps us locate our book. It is also very important that we pay attention to our call number when books are put back on the shelves. That way, it is in just the right place for the next person to be able to find it. Now let's explore the fiction section. Books in this section contain stories that are not true. They are made up by the author. Usually, fiction books are chapter books and are used by older students. They are often longer stories and contain far fewer pictures than the books we can find in the easy section. Books in the fiction section do share some similarities with those in the easy section. They are arranged by alphabetical order by the author's last name and are not true or made up stories. In the fiction section, the call number will begin with an F or FIC. This represents the word fiction. Below this section, the first few letters of the author's last name will be displayed, just like we saw with the books in the easy section. If you could tell that the picture book was the more colorful book with very few words and pictures taking up most of the page, and identify the fiction book as the one with black and white pages and mostly all text, you are correct. Remember, both the easy section and fiction section contains books that are not true. Have call numbers that use the author's last name to sort them alphabetically on the shelves, but they contain very different stories in both length and age appropriateness. Now let's compare and see what we have learned so far. Look at these two books. Can you easily tell which is a picture book and which is a fiction book? How can you tell? Let's continue on our tour by taking a look at the nonfiction section. Nonfiction books are true and are used to gather information on a particular subject. Unlike the other two categories we have looked at, nonfiction books are shelved in numerical order by subject or topic. The Dewey Decimal System is used to categorize or organize our books in this section by grouping them in sets of 10. To help us easily locate nonfiction books, shelf markers are used to direct our search. For example, if we were looking for a book about our school mascot, a yellow jacket, we would look around the end of the 500 section. 590 is for animals and insects. Don't worry about knowing what each group in the nonfiction section represents. 
We have kid-friendly displays set up that will help you on your way. Look for the signs above the shelves. Also, look at the pictures on the wall. They clearly tell you which section each book is located in. Also, don't forget to use your shelf markers. They are a great hint to help you get pointed in the right direction. Close to our nonfiction section, we come to our reference section. Here you will find encyclopedias, dictionaries, and atlases, and globes. These materials are very special and have to be only used inside the media center. They are not allowed to be checked out, but they are here for everyone to share. Let's examine what each of these reference materials have to offer. Encyclopedias are books that span many volumes and tell us true facts and information on various subjects. The call number on an encyclopedia, like any book within a reference section, is R, or the letters R, E, F. Also, you will see that the encyclopedias are numbered and lettered. This information is not only used to keep the books in order, but to help you find information that is of interest to you. For example, if you were looking for information about frogs, you would look for the volume that had a letter F printed on the spine. That book will contain the information that you are looking for. Next to our reference collection, we come across our dictionaries. Dictionaries come in all shapes and sizes. There are student dictionaries, pocket dictionaries, and subject-specific dictionaries. No matter which type you pick up, they all have a few things in common. First, words are arranged in alphabetical order. Also, the words you are looking up will usually be printed in bold with the definition to follow. In some dictionaries, pronunciation guides are used to help you figure out how to correctly say the word. We have several different types of dictionaries in our media center. Atlases and globes are also available within our media center. These are useful in looking at different places around the world. An atlas contains a group of maps, often showing different angles or views of an area. A globe is a map that is round and spins. If you move your finger around a map and stop it at one place, you can see where you have landed. Now imagine you are taking a trip there. What do you see? You can learn a lot about another state or country simply by knowing where it is located. That completes our reference section. Now let's review. All information found in the reference section is true, also called nonfiction. Encyclopedias, dictionaries, atlases, and globes are all found in our reference section. Reference materials are not allowed to be checked out, but are to be used within the media center. That completes our tour of the book sections. We have looked at easy books, fiction books, nonfiction books, and reference materials. But wait, that's not all we have in our media center. Let's take a look at some of the other resources we have right here at Jeff Davis Primary School. Our Media Center also has eight computer workstations available for student use. Whether you are taking a Reading Counts test, looking up a book to check out, using our book system, or creating a project for class, this area is always lots of fun for our students. Once you have selected your book or completed your assignment, there are a few comfy reading areas through the Media Center that you will be able to use. Tables, reading risers, and reading nooks are all places where you can spend some free time reading. Be sure to check out those when you visit the Media Center. Speaking of checking things out, we don't want to forget to visit the circulation desk to check out our book. When you get ready to check out your books, wait on the line on the ground. An adult will ask you to come to the circulation desk. Make sure you have your books ready and your media center card ready to scan. Place your books on your desk with your library card on top. Don't worry if you don't forget your card the first few times. Our media center specialist or media clerk are always available to help you find your library number and check out those books. Once you have finished reading your book, you will need to return it to the Media Center for it to be checked back in and placed back on our shelves for other students to find. To do this, 
Bring your books back to the circulation desk and we will check your books back in by scanning the barcodes on the front. Now that your book is checked back in, you're ready to get a new one. Pick up one of these shelf markers and head to one of the sections in our library to pick out a new book. Remember, use this shelf marker to mark your place on the shelf in case you decide not to select the book that you have chosen. We have now completed our tour of our media center. Let's see if you can use what we have just learned to help you answer a few questions. In which section will we find a book that is not true, also called fiction, that contains mostly pictures and very few words or text? If you said the easy section, you're correct! Let's try another one. What is the name of the section of books that contains books that are non-fiction books or true? It contains information of things in real life. If you said the non-fiction section, you're correct! Finally, once you have found a book that you would like to read, what must you do in order to take it out of the media center with you? If you said, check it out, you're absolutely right. I hope you enjoyed your visit to the Jeff Davis Primary School Media Center. Please come back anytime.